Good morning. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Alduri again. Uh, today's presentation is on a very important subject that affects both men and women, and it has an increased morbidity and mortality. The subject of today is osteoporosis. Definition of osteoporosis is low, low bone mineral density caused by other caused by altered bone microstructure, ultimately predisposing patients to low impact fragility fractures. Osteoporotic fracture is a lead significant decrease in the quality of life, increased morbidity, mortality, and disability. Over 50% of postmenopausal white women will have osteoporotic related fracture. Only 33% of senior women will have a fracture who have hip fracture will be able to return to independence. In white men, the risk of osteoporotic fracture is 20%, but one-year mortality in men who have hip fracture is as twice as that of women. Uh, black male and female have less osteoporosis. One-year mortality rate in men who have hip fracture is a twice of women. But those diagnosed with osteoporosis have similar fracture risk. The aging of American population is expected to triple the number of osteoporotic fracture. This activity describes the evaluation and management of osteoporosis and highlights the role of interprofessional team in improving care of, for affected patients. Objectives is to identify risk factor in development of osteoporosis explain how to diagnose osteoporosis, describe the option of osteo the treatment options of osteoporosis, outline the importance of improving care coordination among interprofessional team members to aid in preventing osteoporosis and improving the outcome for patients with osteoporosis. Epidemiologists estimated that people who have osteoporosis and the incidence rate is increasing with age. Over 70% of those women over the age of 50 are affected. It is more common in male and female than male. In the developed world, 2 to 8% of male, 9 to 38% of female are affected. Worldwide, there are approximately 9 million fractures per year as a result of osteoporosis. One in three female and one in five men over the age of 50 will have osteoporotic fracture. Areas of the world with less vitamin D, sunlight exposure, uh, closer to the equator have higher frisk, uh, fracture rate and in comparison with those people who are living at lower altitude. Uh, osteoporosis is caused by imbalance between bone resorption and bone remodeling, leading to decrease in skeletal mass. In most individuals, the bone mass peak at the age of 30 after which the resorption start in the bone. Failure to reach normal peak bone mass or acceleration of bone loss can lead to osteoporotic fracture. Risk factors is first of all being a woman, advanced age, prior history of a fracture, the use of corticosteroid therapy, low body mass index, smoker, and secondary osteoporosis. There are certain facts that need to be mentioned and that the disease that can cause osteoporosis included hyperparathyroidism, anorexia nervosa, malabsorption, hyperthyroidism, over-treatment of hypothyroidism, chronic renal failure, Cushing disease, and any disease that can lead to long-term immobilization. Secondary amenorrhea for more than one year from various causes, including non-estrogen hormonal therapy, low body weight, uh, excessive exercises can also lead to rapid loss of bone mass. Risk factors of osteoporosis include increasing age, body weight less than 128 pounds, smoking, family history of osteoporosis, white or Asian race, early menopause, low level of physical activity, and personal history of fracture, from the ground level or minor trauma after the age of 40. Patient afflicted with the condition 
affecting all over mortality, morbidity rate, such as a spinal cord injury, can experience rapid deterioration of the bone mineral density level within the first two weeks following this debilitating injury. The diagnosis of osteoporosis should have laboratory assessment of renal thyroid function, 25 hydroxyvitamin D calcium level. The World Health Organization have established dual X-ray absorptiometry scan of the central skeleton are the best test for assessing bone mineral density. Dual X-ray absorptiometry scan can be completed in five minutes with minimal radiation exposure. Dual X-ray uh, absorptiometry scan will measure all calcified tissue in the path of the scan and specificity is better than sensitivity. Peripheral dual extra absorptiometry test and ultrasound measure of the bone of density in the bone, um, not a high risk, and do not correlate well with the standard dual X-ray absorptiometry scan of the hip and the spine. They are not as useful in the diagnosis or treatment of uh, osteoporosis. Radiology score, scores between one, negative one, negative 2.5 reflect the diagnosis of osteopenia. Scores below negative 2.5 reflect diagnosis of osteoporosis. Instead of measuring against young adult mean, a z-score is the number of standard deviation above or below age matched bone mineral density. It is useful when suspecting secondary osteoporosis. A score less than 1.5 warrant the workup for secondary causes of osteoporosis. Low bone mineral density of the hip has the highest predictive value of a fracture. This is because the spine bone density can be falsely elevated due to calcification of degenerative bone disease. Spinal density can still be useful in younger perimenopausal women without significant degenerative bo bone disease. The spine can also show initial osteoporotic changes before they can be detected in the hip. A validated tool developed by the World Health Organization is the Osteoporosis Risk Assessment Tool, which gives about 10 year probability of major fracture. It can be used on men and women and takes into the account body mass index independent risk factor, some causes of secondary osteoporosis. It is most useful in determining which patient with osteopenia needs a treatment and determining which patient younger than the age of 50 would benefit from dual X-ray absorptiometry scanning due to high risk fracture. It does not have utility for patients who have already been treated for osteoporosis. The management, osteoporosis is a worldwide health public issue with the aging population. The resulting increase in fragility fracture has generated significant socioeconomic impact. Robust scientific research has increased our knowledge of endocrine metabolism and pathophysiology of osteoporosis. This information has led to level one randomized clinical trial, which demonstrate the benefit effect of appropriate regimen in reducing fractures and coincidental mortality. Despite this contribution of public health problem remain and has stubbornly failed many a public awareness campaign by governmental and private profession organization. Effectiveness in delivering the message is greatly enhanced following the centennial fragility fracture, whether it be distal radius, uh, hip, or spine. The treating orthopedic surgeon has the full attention of the injured patient who can be steered into osteoporosis screening program and ultimately treatment. Studies in Canada have shown that if the surgeon initiate the process by so much as ordering bone densitometry exam, the patient is more likely to get the treatment for the underlying disease than if it is suggested that the patient see their medical doctor at some future date. The patient takes the cue from the surgeon. Patient compliance goes 
and the treatment reinstituted. We as surgeon must be part of the solution. This has been emphasized in the worldwide effort in orthopedic surgery, such as the bone and joint disease decade, own bone program, the commitment of health bone, and restoration is important. Our patient deserves that.